All right, that being said, I'm getting word from up front that Red Goal is ready with his Dark Souls any percent. Take it away, man. Hello, this is Dark Souls. Uh, I'm Regal. Hi, I'm Gramelios. And uh, I think we had a name incentive for this? Last I checked, it was Sprost. Yeah. Uh, indeed, so the, the name that got met with $2,726 is Espra, that's spelled S-B-R-A-H, exclamation point. I don't know what that There's means, that. but that's cool. Cool. All right, just uh, before we start, I want to mention that we're going to be starting Thief with Black Firebombs. Thief, because you get a free Master Key, and you're gonna, we're going to need the Master Key to open certain doors in the run, and Black Firebombs is going to help us to kill a few enemies a lot quicker. And other than that, we're ready to go. All right, um, get ready with timer countdown. Three, two, one, go. Good luck, man. So everyone, welcome to Dark Souls. This is a 3D combat-oriented action game. I'm sure many of you have seen it before. You play as the chosen undead, tasked with traveling the world and gathering up the Lord Souls in order to extend the Age of Fire. But since this is any percent, we'll be doing very little of that. Like all Dark Souls runs, you start here in the Undead Asylum uh, with the goal of escaping past the Asylum Demon. Uh, right off the bat, while climbing this ladder, Regal's going to go ahead and take off all armor uh, in order to maintain fast rolling throughout the entire run. That's going to be very important. Uh, coming up into the next room, and we're about to come face to face with the Asylum Demon to beat this guy. Most players will take a lap and then initiate the fight with a plunging attack. However, if you look in the bottom left, you can see those 10 black fire bombs. Turns out you can take out this guy with a total of five. So it begins one, two, three, while rolling towards the door and using the impact. That's a slow attack. <laughs> yeah, that's not a one you want to see, but we, we dodged it. There we go. That's one boss down. So it turns out that even taking out the Asylum Demon early, we still have to do some cleanup here in the Asylum. First by grabbing the first proper weapon of the run, uh, the Bandit's Knife, here it is. It doesn't deal a lot of damage, but it deals enough. Yeah, we're gonna be using it for Tourist Demon and another enemy after that, and that's pretty much it. We're also gonna free an NPC named Oscar, and rather than baiting the rolling metal ball, we're gonna do something different. Turns out, if you exit and reload the game, your character standing up will break any breakable object like the wall that you happen to be next to. Yeah, it's loud. Quit outs are very powerful in Dark Souls. They can even break walls. Yeah, uh, so Oscar here gives you the Estus Flask. That's the primary form of healing, along with some additional keys. Uh, even though, like Regal said, the Thief class starts with the Master Key, it turns out the Master Key is kind of deceptive. It, uh, it doesn't actually open every door in the game, just, you know, a lot of them. The ones we need. Yeah. So opening this door, it's a very heavy door. It takes and, quite a while. Yeah. Uh, we're almost out of the asylum. Uh, you can skip every cutscene in this game, thankfully, so you won't see more than a few frames of the animation, but a big bird comes and grabs you to take you to uh, Lord Rand proper. So hooray, there's the asylum, the easy part of the run. Um, here in uh, Firelink, I want to draw attention to sprinting. Uh, it should be pretty intuitive that sprinting is faster than running, so we want to spend as much time as possible sprinting. Uh, one nuance there is that from a walking state, you can reach sprinting speed more quickly via a few methods like blocking or toggling weapons. So like right here, if you see these quick toggles or quick blocks, that's usually the reason why. Yeah, it saves about 0 0.4 seconds over one minute of sprinting, but it's still time still saved. saves time. Yeah, going through these fog gates, you're about to see the introduction to the, uh, the bridge drake that we'll see uh, later. You can just uh, block and then roll right past it to not lose a lot of speed. Or, I mean, get staggered, but that's try to roll through damage. the stagger, but it's pretty precise. And these guys are really annoying. <laughs> uh, we're going to make a pit stop down at the Undead Merchant, and it's going to be hard to see because Regal's menuing is really fast because he's really good at this game. <laughs> we're going to buy four different things. First, the rapier, which is a weapon. Second, uh, the short bow, and then arrows for that bow, and finally, the shield. All four of those things are going to have very specific functions in the speedrun, which we'll try to call out uh, as they become relevant. But first, we have to make it through. Uh, even though the Undead Berg is early, this area is really scary, like this, this room, for example. The scariest part of the run, honestly, in terms of the uh, areas. This guy in the door becomes invulnerable for a moment. Nice job getting through without, with no damage. This door is also kind of scary. We're going to use the master key to open it. Nice job. OK, and we're through. 
Um, from this chest, we're going to grab three gold pine resins. Uh, gold pine resin is a weapon buff that applies the lightning effect to the right-hand weapon, which uh, in this case is the bandit's knife, also just casually. There we go, hopping over the barrel, faster than waiting for it. I'm going to heal real quick, just for safety, because Taurus Demon can be pretty annoying. Yeah. Um, if we didn't say this, uh, the Taurus Demon coming up is weak to lightning, which is why we grab those cold pine resins. Well, that and one more reason. The boss doesn't spawn until roughly halfway across the bridge, so we're going to run forward, dart to the right to hopefully dodge some arrows. You can see him pass right behind, apply that gold pine resin. This boss is scarier than you might think, given how early it comes in the run. There's a lot of shockwaves from the hammer. He can move very erratically, and he can kick you as he moves around. And that should do it. One more hit. Down it goes. That was okay. Well done. But we're not done yet. We just used one gold pine resin. You're about to see the second usage of it. Coming up is one of the more famous or maybe infamous uh, portions of Dark Souls, the bridge drake that's about to fly overhead and douse the entire bridge in fire. We can avoid getting cooked to a crisp by getting in this alcove off to the right. And then while the fire is dissipating, pulling out the bow and arrow that we just bought from the merchant in order to bait down the drake, like so. Next, we're going to very quickly apply a gold pine resin and hopefully dodge this arrow hit. Very close. One, two, three hits. Get to the Drake Sword. Nice. All right, that's yeah. the scariest part of the run. The Drake Sword is a, a very powerful early game weapon. We're not going to use it just yet, but you'll see it uh, in the near future. Also, just going to drop some unnecessary items. Yeah, you want your inventory to be pretty clean uh, for multiple reasons. Mostly for the move swap glitch we're going to be doing later, but also you can't menu while you're sprinting in this game. So you want it to be very clean so you can swap things around pretty easily. So we're quickly approaching one of the most fascinating tricks in the run, I think anyway, called the Sen's Gate Skip. There's an area called Sen's Fortress, and you're meant to have to ring two bells of awakening and go on this whole long uh, journey before this gate will open. But it turns out that via a camera, or a trick involving camera manipulation, we can get through. Step one is to exit the game in order to, there we go, reset enemy aggro. Then we're going to turn around and bait one of these hollows who may misbehave. Yeah, Hopefully we'll he'll be nice. Shouldn't be too bad. That's yep, there we go. Best RNG. Now check this out. This is going to look very strange. Regal is going to try to parry this hollow on a very particular spawn on the bridge. And if done correctly, we clip the character out of bounds just enough to activate the death camera, which is this overhead top-down view, but not far enough to actually touch the kill plane. Believe it or not, those are two different triggers. Now, the reason we did this is that while the camera is in this glitched state, the gate to Sen's Fortress just isn't even going to load, so we can just walk right through. Hopefully this hollow doesn't catch up so we can sit. All right, nice. Good. Yeah. Going to level up to 11 strength in order to properly wield that Drake sword we got. Uh, and I know it's hard to see with the camera, but we're now running along the bridge to Sen's uh, Fortress. Like I said, with the camera in this state, the gate just doesn't load. You won't have to deal with this for much longer. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. We're going to quit out to reset the camera just as we pass into Sin. There's the gate. We're going to do a jump quit out so we can quit out in the exact spot so the cycles will be good. And as we load back in, uh, Regal's going to spin the camera quickly. There's the gate still closed. So Sen's Fortress, another really fascinating uh, zone. It's full of these traps, and uh, as Regal mentioned, the quit out was done in a particular location so that as we sprint through, these cycles on these uh, swinging axes and such are in uh, the correct locations that you don't have to slow down very much. Yeah, casually, this place can be kind of a nightmare, but for speedrunners, it acts the same way every time, so it's pretty easy to get through. Yeah. It's a pretty chill place. There are also boulders. The first boulder always spawns as you get close, and it's just going to absolutely decimate this snake, bro. Bye -bye. There he goes. Um, although you can't see it, there's a mechanism up at the top of Sen's Fortress which can change the direction that these boulders take, even if you're not there to operate it. Uh, so in a moment, we're going to run past and hopefully not get hit by the darts. Nicely done. And then we're going to run up the stairs and quit out. Uh, and prepare yourselves, there's a loud sound incoming. Yeah. If we didn't quit out here, a boulder would have spawned and probably killed us. Yeah. Which is, you know, slow. There it is. Very loud. All right, this is probably a good time for donations, or at least one real quick. All right, sounds good. We have $5 from Ty Digga that says, good luck, Regal, from all of us in Kata's chat. Oh, awesome. Thank you, guys. Now, there's a snake guy on the stairs here. Thankfully, you can just kind of run forward and slap him, <laughs> get him out of the way. Just one more very thin platform, and then we're going to reach the roof. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start explaining the move swap early. It's a very important glitch. 
let's, let's see if I can set this up. We practiced this explanation. If you look down in the bottom left, in a moment, Regal's going to equip the bow into that left-hand weapon, which is the offhand. Bows are special because they're the only type of weapon that can be two-handed, but if you instead queue up a two-hand while locked in another animation and then quickly swap weapons, which you'll see in just a moment, just pause before that happens. There we go. This might not have looked like much. We're now two-handing the Drake Sword, but it's in the left hand. Now, bows, they can shoot arrows, right? But they, by their nature, don't have plunging, rolling, or sprinting attacks. So as a fallback, the game will pull the move set, i.e. the attack animations from the right-hand weapon. The takeaway is that we can combine the rapier's very fast attack speed with the high damage output of the two-handed Drake Sword. And you'll get to use that. Well, that guy just goes away. That's Bob. Say bye to Bob. And now you get to see it in uh, real proper use on the uh, Iron Golem. Despite this move swap, this guy is still very tanky and we're underleveled. Thankfully, we don't need to actually deplete this enormous health pool. Uh, if you play your cards right, ideally this guy's gonna stomp. We'll see what he does. Nah. Not quite. But you can stagger him. Just have to get his, him to be rotated correctly. Good, there's the stagger. Now on... Ooh. Okay, sorry. We should still be fine. On the next hit, you're gonna see him topple over backwards for a quick kill. There we go. That's a good bomb cycle right here. Well done. So as we approach Anor Londo here, uh, one aspect of Dark Souls speedrunning in general, including any percent that we haven't talked about yet, is that for maximum speed, you usually end up skipping all non-essential bonfires, which is risky, but, you know, obviously it saves time. Uh, here in the early part of Anor Londo, we are going to run off to the left and grab one of these bonfires. This one is not for safety. It's because we're going to have to teleport here uh, later once we're on our path to the DLC. Yeah, we need to level up anyway, so it's good spot to sit yeah. down. And speaking of that level up, uh, part of the souls that we have, that 43k, is going to go towards endurance. The rest is going to head towards 27 strength. That's going to be very important to wield uh, the next weapon. Um, otherwise, in Anor Londo, there's kind of a lot of running to do. We're going to go down an elevator, uh, past the rafters, and hopefully the painting guardians play nice. Yeah, that'd um, be pretty scary. Yeah, in the meantime, uh, Muffin, we have time for a whole bunch of donations. Oh, fantastic. Well, let's start with a big one with $4,040 from Lawrence Sontag. They say, every year, Games and Quick shows us new games, incredible spirit, and most of all, how gaming can bring together and make the world a better place. Because of that, it is my honor to donate the money on behalf of my incredibly generous streaming community. I said I'd match them if they hit $2,000 dollars and twenty dollars if i'm being honest i didn't think they would but here they are awesome do good keep gaming and let's see that music video that's very generous thank you now we can get a few more all right great well we have a hundred dollars from ven bright that says gdq is good dark souls is good save the frames save our souls this guy's spooky yeah all right there we go he can get a vacuum backstab, it's real nasty. Yeah, the Penning Guardians can be pretty annoying, but they were fine right there. Uh, let's say we have time for two more. All right, two more you shall have. We have $250 from the Blue Crayon that says, gotta donate for some Dark Souls hype. This event has had some fantastic runs and I can't wait to see more. Have fun and go fast. We also have $100 from Front Row Praise the Sub that says, Preventing Cancer, Covert Muffin, and Dark Souls, yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to have semi-serious time. You see those Batwing Demons up in the top right? Uh, these guys and heading towards the infamous Anor Orlando Archers. The Batwing Demons by themselves aren't that bad, but they can throw lightning spears at you from behind, and the best way to identify that threat is audio cue. So I'm going to go ahead and quiet down. Nice. All right, there's the first uh, set down. There's two more here as well. Oh, They're nice. Still need audio cues for this guy up here. All right, good. One more Silver Knight in the way. And Let's... Sia. We're good. Say bye to that guy. Don't forget to take the safety bonfire. Thank you. 
I'm like, so used to not taking this thing in runs. So yeah, we want to take this because the upcoming boss is pretty random, and they can just kill you very easily. And dying to them loses a whole lot of time. So we're just going to play it safe here for the marathon. Take that, this and spend our souls. That next boss is Ornstein and Smo. We'll cover them in a moment. Uh, rather than heading straight upstairs, though, we're going to take a dip into the basement uh, and open a chest to get a weapon called the Dragon's Tooth. Uh, so far, we used the Drake Sword for some damage back on the Iron Golem, but this Dragon's Tooth is going to be the, well, really the only damage dealer for the rest of the run. Yeah. So you saw a move swap with the Drake Sword earlier. This is a much bigger, much better weapon. <laughs> Or, uh, ordinarily wielded by Havel the Rock. It's, uh, it's a heavy weapon, is what it is. Yeah, this, this will really show you the power of the new swap. Yeah, uh, the Dragon Tooth ordinarily has very slow attacks, you know, but it's compensated by high damage. And the move swap allows you to uh, sidestep that restriction. There's also a little uh, skip here. The skip is so easy to do that it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of casual players found it. You just hop right over the railing. It's a shortcut to Ornstein and Smo. Uh, we just have to dip down and then get past one more uh, giant enemy. Yeah, well, we're going to heal, and if you hide behind this pillar, nobody notices you, so that's cool. If this giant does a sweep attack, we have to dodge it, otherwise you can just keep sprinting. All right, well, okay. there we go. All right, we're going to do a moose swap again. Yep, so Ornstein and Smo is very, very random, and you also have to fight the camera. Uh, we're going to take out Ornstein first, because Ornstein tends to be easier to uh, isolate. There's a good opening. He might dodge out of the way. It's going to take three sets of these attacks to kill him. Let's see if Smo behaves. Come on, Smo, what are you doing? Okay, almost have them. Juggling two enemies is not easy, especially when they're this dangerous. All right. There goes Ornstein. We still have to take out Smo. He becomes supercharged, but even in the supercharged state, you can stagger him with a quick one-two attack. We're going to just do this all the way until he dies. It is possible for Smo to gain hyper armor if he decides to dodge, so hopefully he doesn't do that. We'll see. Just one more set. Good nice. fight. Regal made that look way easier than it actually is. Those guys are very random. Uh, so your reward then for uh, going through Anor Londo and clearing out uh, Ornstein and Smo is that you get the Lord Vessel, which is going to unlock Bonfire Teleportation. It's given to you by Guinevere, uh, this NPC who gives you the big spiel and uh, praises you for something or other. We're just going to shoot her with an arrow. This is actually significantly faster than speaking yeah. to her. Like, probably about 25 seconds faster. And with that, we're back. All right. Yeah, so at this point, we finished basically the first phase of the run, which is clearing Sen's Fortress, Anor Walondo, and gathering up the, the Lord Vessel. Uh, next up, we're going to go ring the Two Bells of Awakening. And that might sound strange to anyone who knows this game, because the whole purpose of SGS, the Sen's Gate Skip, was to uh, avoid having to ring the bells, right? Turns out you do need to ring them both anyway because we need access to the Firelink Altar to uh, place the Lord Vessel and to set up a wrong warp quite a bit later in the run. Yeah, but also we get to come back and fight these bosses with uh, Dragon Tooth. Yeah. And then fighting them with a Drake Sword. So yeah, that's why that's we do these things out of order. A good bit of time doing that as well. The path up to the Gargoyles is uh, kind of uh, arduous. Even though these enemies are small, they can be quite threatening. Not so much that little baby archer on the side. Yeah, we're going to hope for good RNG in this hollow room coming up here, because it can be pretty scary. This guy can also, he's just not moving. Yeah, he can be annoying, but he's fine right there. So if you get clipped from behind, it usually staggers you and can deal a lot of damage. Okay. One more in the doorway. All right, that was good. OK. Oh. OK. okay. <laughs> You know what, that one tried Valiant. Yeah, I got, I got stuck on the, uh, the dying one's body. Uh, as Regal gets off the ladder, you're going to see an alternate version of the move swap. Again, you can see that gigantic two-handed Dragon's Tooth in the left hand. Uh, the Gargoyles don't spawn immediately when you go through the Fog Gate, but I'm just going to let the damage speak for itself as for why we do the events in this game in the order that we do. Look at this damage. There's one. Now, the second Gargoyle spawns at half health, so it's going to queue up a Fire Breath. Nope. That's Gargoyles. It's kind of nice, too. Sometimes when you defeat those Gargoyles, they can drop a weapon. Uh, the weapon order in your inventory is important for the move swap, and so if they dropped a Halberd, you would have to do some uh, reorganizing. Thankfully, it didn't happen, so, you know, good, slightly good RNG there. Yeah. We're going to do a glitch here. We already did it once, but uh, didn't explain it. Uh, we're going to... 
queue up using the bone and then go into our inventory and use a flask instead, and that will dupe the bone. It will use the Estus flask, but it will keep the bone around for us. And we're going to do this again with Smo Soul later as well. This just allows us to keep our souls and to get more souls later. It's a really useful glitch. So that's one bell out of the way. There's still another one way down in Blight Town. Uh, we're going to get to Blight Town via the elevator to New Londo Ruins. Along the way, we're going to kick Law Trek right off a cliff. There's one. Hopefully. He can be a little uh, thorny. Kicking in this game is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. Uh, we have to exit and reload the game in order for his loot to yeah. drop. And uh, he drops some souls, but the only real loot that matters is that Ring of Favor and Protection. It gives you boosts to a number of stats, but the only one that's really impactful for this run is that it increases your equipment load, which means we'll be able to maintain uh, fast rolling later on, right? Yeah, we really want to fast roll against the DLC bosses. They can be really annoying as they are, but even more so when you can't fast roll. Hard to see, but the Soul of Snow is just duped as well. Multiple times, actually. Yeah, you don't have to dupe it the second time, but just for safety, we want to keep it around. So uh, there's another really interesting trick coming up, which uh, I would recommend paying attention to because it'll happen multiple times this run. Opening the door isn't the trick. You just press the <laughs> Um But we're going to head into Blight Town. Quaylag and the second Bell of Awakening are at the bottom of Blight Town, and it takes a little while to get down there. So rather than actually traversing all the you know, rickety woodwork, we're going to do a particular trick to negate fall damage. What you're going to see Regal do in a moment is leap off a cliff and then do a downward plunging attack on a, on a slope and then uh, buffer a roll. What's going to happen is when you hit the ground, the rolling iframes or invincibility frames will actually negate that fall damage. There's the plunge. Oh, it took damage. That's There's the unusual. roll. Yep, one more from here. And just like that, we're at the bottom of Blight Town. It's, it's really, really powerful. Uh, the unfortunate part about Blight Town is your reward for traversing all the way down here is you just get poisoned in this uh, water that you have to roll through. Uh, thankfully, if you look at your health in the top left, this damage deals so little damage that it usually doesn't matter. Yeah, we're going to heal for yeah. safety, though, just in case, because if Quilog tags us, it's not going to be very good. Uh, Quaylag is going to go down relatively fast because, again, we have that very powerful Dragon's Tooth uh, combined with the Move Swap glitch. Not as fast as, as the Gargoyles because Quaylag is significantly tankier. Um, ideally, you don't want her to jump in terms of the RNG. You, that's not what you want. And if she happens to queue up an attack, which she uh, slowly uh, spews out a pool of lava, that can also be very good for dealing damage. Shout out to Gandre, because I failed my moose swap. Here we go. Is she going to jump? Nope. No. OK, good. This is the attack you want. This is good RNG. This is second best RNG. Yeah. So as you can see, we're still dealing a lot of damage. That's the attack you want her to do. And that's the fight, just like that. Uh, so with this, the second bell of awakening is just past here. Uh, ringing the second bell, it opens the gate to Sen's fortress. Who cares? We've already been there. Uh, it also awakens Framped in Firelink Shrine. We aren't going to actually talk to Framped. We're just going to uh, dive into the hole that opens up the uh, Firelink altar. Um, we mentioned phases, the first phase of the run, get the Lord Vessel, second phase, ring these both bells. We've now completed both of those. The next phase is going to be an extended setup for a wrong warp, which begins by getting into the DLC. Okay, so that's our ultimate target here is to get into the DLC. First, we have to go and uh, place the Lord Vessel. This is going to be important for the wrong warp, but also placing the Lord Vessel removes this golden fog gate, which blocks access to the Duke's archives. Uh, on the way to Darkroot Garden, which is where we're going to be heading next, we're going to stop by Andre the Blacksmith uh, as well. He bangs that hammer very, very loudly, and we're going to buy two <laughs> things. First, the Crest of Artorius, which is a key item used to get closer to the Undead Basin. And uh, second, the Weapon Smith Box, because we're going to be upgrading our Dragon's Tooth from its base state to plus one. Uh, but Muffin, while we run through the garden, not a lot else going on. This would be great for, let's say, two more donations. All right, sounds great. We have $100 from Ellie Rain that says, I've been watching GDQ since the AGDQ 2013, and I look forward to all of your events. The Souls Born games and Sekiro are some of my favorite games, so I had to donate to get in for that bonfire. Keep being awesome, and good luck on the run, Regal. Thank you. We also have a $500 donation from Ryan232. Nice. And Ryan says, praise the sun, kill the cancer. Thank you very much. Uh, in a moment, you're going to see a door with a giant glowing emblem on it. That's what we bought the Crest of Artorias for. Uh, when we open the door, we're going to quote out not only to skip his animation, but because all those trees we ran past are still uh, very much aggro. They're still on our tail. 
And uh, as we mentioned before, exiting and reloading is extremely powerful for a lot of reasons in Dark Souls, including resetting enemy aggro. Uh, also going to jump through an illusory roll, I should say, through an illusory wall uh, and rest at this bonfire. We're going to be teleporting back here as well. And, you know, getting more endurance. Yeah, so now we can fast roll for pretty much the rest of the run, which is good. Uh, the area we're heading to next is called the uh, Undead Basin. It is going to eventually be the entry point to the DLC, although we have to complete a number of tasks uh, along the way. Difficult to talk about because we don't get to see it for just a moment, but the basin is in this uh, you know, very low area. We have to run through the woods for a while and then climb some ladders down, but climbing ladders is slow. So if you remember uh, in Blight Town, just a, a few minutes ago, we did those plunging attacks to negate fall damage. You're actually going to see that again, but in a slightly different form. It's the same exact trick, though. Yeah, this is the more common way you'll see it. The ones in Blight Town look a little different, but it's still the same concept. Also, there's a gigantic Hydra down there. We'll be paying uh, him a visit. So here comes the uh, plunging attack. Check this out. Going to try to plunge and glance off in a particular way. Use the rolling iframes to dodge the damage. Well done. And we're right onto this Hydra. We have to kill this Hydra to get access to the DLC and a Dragon Scale. We're going to deal damage in two different ways. The first being the five remaining Black Fire Bombs, and second, two-handed jumping attacks to take out entire heads at a time with the Dragon's Tooth. Uh, important to note that the movement of these heads in terms of exactly where they plunge into the water is... It's actually consistent, but it's based on your position, such that, like, if you were a task and your position was identical every single time, it would be perfectly consistent. As a human, there tends to be some variability. Last firebomb and one more hit on the heads will take the thing out. There they come. Good night, Hydra. Nice. Perfect. Well done. We kill the Hydra. There's uh, the Dragon Scale. We'll get it in just a second. We're going to use that Dragon Scale to upgrade the Dragon's Tooth. Uh, but in terms of accessing the DLC, there's a golden golem in the corner. You can't see him yet, but when we exit and reload the game, the golem will spawn. And uh, as before, it's kind of, you'll see it a bunch of times, we always set up the, the move swap for these combat sections. Uh, this golden crystal golem is housing an NPC named Dusk, who has been, against her will, plucked from the past, and you free her, and she talks to you and gives you this whole spiel about how she wants to pass on her knowledge. So we yeah, just kill her. Dusk. It saves one second to kill her. Yeah, so with uh, the Hydra taken out, with... Uh, Dusk Freed, uh, we're going to go ahead and upgrade that Dragon's Tooth to plus one, like we mentioned, and then teleport back to that Anor Londo bonfire in order to head towards the Duke's Archives. Now, the reason we have to go to the Duke's Archives, or I should say the very beginning part of the Archives, is that we have to get an item called the Broken Pendant from a very specific enemy. In classic FromSoft style, the way you access the DLC is really convoluted. I don't know casually how anyone is meant to know to do this. <laughs> um, but while we're on the way, Muffin, let's say we have time for two donations. All right, sounds great. Well, starting off with $100 from Starroots29 that says, always look forward to AGDQ. I love watching the games that gave me such grief getting totally destroyed. We also have $40 from Rocksteady that says, had to donate during my favorite game of all time. Here's to another great GDQ so far and to many more to come. Praise the sun. Thank you. Uh, there are two of these uh, two of these bores. You can just dodge roll straight through, and there's going to be one more around the corner, and then we're going to take an elevator up. We're really not going to spend much time in the archives at all. Yeah, they can be scary. Yeah. The sound they make is just so imposing. <laughs> uh, so I mentioned a moment ago that we upgraded the Dragon's Tooth to plus one. The reason is that this golem up ahead will now die in one quick set of attacks, but in the unupgraded form it would take two, and you really don't want to spend any time amidst all these enemies, any more time than you have to. I mean, it's nice that it does extra damage on the other bosses, but this is a pretty big part. You want yep. to kill this guy in one attack? Going to kill it and immediately dark sign out because we don't need the souls anymore. There's the broken pendant. Uh, the downside of accessing this DLC is that you do have to make a second run back to that same corner of the basin uh, where we took out the Crystal Golem. So, uh, Muffin, I'm going to toss it back to you uh, again if we have some more donations. Oh, yeah, we're getting tons of love for this run, man. You're doing great, Regal. Uh, we have $100 from Karamus that says, Dark Souls and cancer research, two things that are very important to me. As someone who has a close family member suffering from stage 4 cancer, AGDQ gives me so much hope. And I just had to donate during the Dark Souls run. Praise the sun. Let's say one more quick one. Okay, yeah, sure. We have $250 from Marna Sapper 212 that says, another GDQ, another donation during Dark Souls. Always look forward to these charity events. Thank you very much. Uh, you get to see this falling attack again. 
By the way, what's happening here is that by plunging attacking in that way, the game effectively thinks that you've landed, and that restores your ability to roll in midair. That's, that's the way that the trick works. That's the way it worked in Blight Town as well. It's just a little, it's a little more obvious when you actually gain air. Yeah, it's pretty hard to move swap here. I felt it right there, but we should be able to get it. So before there was a uh, golden crystal golem, now there's something else. Uh, you'll see it at the top of the screen. There's that dark portal. That is the entryway into the DLC. Although we'll skip the cutscene, the uh, hand of Manus comes and grabs you and snatches you into the past, which is where the DLC takes place. Um, similar to the Anne Orlando interior bonfire, we're going to take this one for safety as well because this run back really sucks. Yeah. And uh, the upcoming boss, the Sanctuary Guardian, is very random as well. Yeah, this is probably my least favorite boss in the whole run. I don't like ONS that much either, but this guy is not great. Um, ideally, the attack you want here is there's going to be this kind of wing attack that also kind of rear backwards and then uh, hit the water with a wind attack. But like I said, very random. We'll adapt as we need to. Oh, that's not what I'm doing. Nice dodge. This guy will go down pretty fast, but... That's bad. <laughs> By the way, on these attacks in particular, that was two head attacks, means it's only going to be two. Uh, if he does alternating swipe. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fine. We weren't kidding when we said uh, that this guy's risky. This well, is exactly. I messed up. Uh, if you're doing a running attack and you press block, it cancels your running attack, and that kind of just ruined the whole beginning of the fight, but that's okay. We took the bonfire, that's not a huge time loss, and that's the first death of the run, so. No, maybe this time uh, it'll open with that really beautiful air attack. Yeah, maybe so. Or maybe it'll be terrible again, who knows. Yeah, but that was, that was all me. The good news is that souls don't really matter in this run. What are you doing? That was odd. Yeah. There we go. That's the attack you want. Check out this damage. It is very high, you just have to wait for an opening to get that damage in. That's not what I wanted him to do. And he just flew way into the middle of the arena. Yeah, I don't like this boss. It's OK. Come here, buddy. There we go. Fine. Yeah, uh, the Guardian was particularly thorny today, but we're through it. Uh, this next bonfire here in the Ulusil Sanctuary, we are not taking for safety. We are going to have to teleport back here later. This is also going to be where the wrong warp is performed, although we'll uh, touch back on that a little bit later. Uh, Muffin, I think I'll toss to you again for, let's say, one quick donation on the way to the Royal Wood. Okay, sounds good. Well, we have $100 from Team Teamwork that says, The Dark Souls games are my favorite of all time. Praise the sun, praise the runners, and the staff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as we run across this bridge, although you can't really see it at the top of the screen, there are some enemies that are going to uh, become aggressive towards the player, and they can cause you a lot of grief. Uh, so as we've seen a few times now, Rigo going to exit and reload the game in order to reset their aggro. Um, the reason is that we're about to go and set up a, another variation of that plunging fall damage negation known as the Royal Wood Skip. Um, there's going to be a house up ahead with a hole in it, and the fall to the floor is actually low enough that you could survive it via fall damage alone, except that there's artificially a kill plane there placed by the developers to uh, force you to, at least attempt to force you to traverse the zone as usual. Like I said, we're going to use that same plunging fall damage negation we've seen uh, several times now. And this trick, uh, if you pull it off uh, correctly, saves about 45 seconds. Going to go ahead and set it up. Back step to hit the wall at the correct spot and slow down. There's the roll. Nicely done. Uh, and in very short order, this brings us, there's the same move swap. You've seen it a million times. Uh, this brings us to Artorias. Rather than uh, commentating this, I think it's more enjoyable to just sort of enjoy the fight. That's a good attack. You want him to buff. Almost. Dude. There we go. Nice fight. 
Okay, now bear with me, this gets a little technical. The whole reason we've been going through the DLC is to set up a wrong warp. This wrong warp is the product of two different teleportation items interfering with one another. The first is the dark sign, which we already have. The second, which we're acquiring right now, is the purple coward's crystal, which warps you out of this PvP area called the Battle of Stoicism. This item is also normally only usable within the Battle of Stoicism, but it turns out that through a frame-perfect trick known as an item swap, we can force the purple coward's crystal to activate outside of its intended area. If you then interrupt that teleportation animation using the dark sign, the game basically becomes in a conflicted state where it attempts to position the player at the coordinates of the Battle of Stoicism gazebo relative to the Firelink Altar. And since those coordinates are invalid, you instead get placed at the origin point, which is past the door in the kiln. Everyone catch that? Remember that all of this rests on the frame-perfect trick Weagle's going to try to take a sip from the Estus flask on the frame that the character's feet hit the ground. If it works, you'll see a weird purple haze around the Estus. Didn't quite work. Just drinking means it was about a frame late. Thankfully, it's very quick to set up. It's okay. It might take a few tries. This trick's hard to do consistently. There, we there go. it is. Quickly activating the dark sign to interrupt the original warp. And if done correctly, we are now in the kiln of the first flame. Very powerful trick allows you to uh, avoid having to collect any of the Lord Souls. Uh, at this point, we're in a bit of a victory march all the way to Gwyn, so Muffin, let's say we have time for three quick donations on the way. Fantastic. Well, we have a special 12 to art donation from Ashwin <laughs> that says, Big shout out to Regal, who has spent so much time teaching people this game. If you were warning or doing a run, he was there. Speed Souls would not be the same without him. Thank you for being a good teacher and friend. You taught ha me quite a bit, too. Thank you, Ashwin. Happy birthday, Regal, from oh, yeah. all the people watching you and cheering you on. Yeah, today is my birthday. Thank you, Ashwood. Let's say one more, Muffin. All right, well, $30 from Mr. Giggle16 that says, beating the game faster than it took me to beat the first boss? Please take my money. Thanks for supporting an important cause. Thank you very much, everyone. And yeah, happy birthday to you. I want to shout out again, Regal taught me most of what I know about Dark Souls, so a very, very good teacher in that regard. Uh, we're quickly approaching the, uh, uh, the fog gate, excuse me, to the final boss, uh, Gwyn. We're going to use a particular strategy to attempt to stun lock Gwyn pretty much to death. If things go badly right off the bat, we might have to quit out to yeah. reset, but... He can not cooperate sometimes, but hopefully... What we're going to try to do is get a single hit first, which it won't stagger, but then the... Oh, uh, that was yep. my fault. <laughs> this guy's real scary if you mess up, so we're going to quit out. Even speedrunners will be killed very quickly oh, yeah. if you get hit. You can, you can salvage it if you're doing PB attempts, but it's not really worth it in Marathon. So we're going to try it again, like I said, to get a single hit first, such that the next hit will now stagger, and now we can just continually circle straight, forcing him to turn, and we can do this almost until the boss is dead. Yeah, if he jumps away, though, I'm going to quit out again. It's too scary. One more set of these. Now on the final hit, we're going to do something different. Well, he's going to do a grab attack. That's slow. We're going to attempt to parry. There's the parry, setting up the riposte in order to shorten Gwyn's death animation. Get ready on time. It's going to be right when we touch the middle bonfire. And time. time. We're going to see what the end game time is. I'm thinking like a 35, run. 34. 3422, that's okay. Well done. Um, thank you to GDQ for letting me be here. Thanks, Gramilios. Um, My pleasure. Shout out to Speed Souls. If anybody wants to learn how to run this game or any other Souls games, whether it's Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, or Bloodborne, join the Discord. There's, a, there's lots of knowledgeable and passionate runners there that can teach you how to run the, any of the games that you want. And um, other than that, that's, that's, that's me. I'm done. Thank you. Wow, excellent job, Regal, and very impressive run of Dark Souls Any Percent. Upcoming next is going to be none other than Control Any Percent run by Brianato, and we were able to meet both of those donation incentives to close that out. So thank you so much for those donations. Yeah. And speaking of hype, we have a $1,024 donation from Whale Noises 203. And they say, Whale Noises. 
Thank you so much, Whale Noises. Hey, folks, we'll be right back as our runner is getting prepared. I'm going to throw it over to a quick Twitch ad. See you in a bit. Are you ready, AGDQ 2020? It is time to take control. I'm Prolix, I'll be your host here for the next run. It's Control by Brian Otto. And in the meantime, let me read some of these donations that we had in for that wonderful Dark Souls run. Jim 101 donated $500. Praise the sun, praise the run. Kill the game and save the frames. Let's defeat cancer. Thanks for your generosity, Jim. Kowise with $10 here. Oh, you know exactly what I'm about. Kowise says, can we get another quick interview with Dr. Muffin to remind us what to do with Twitch Prime subscriptions? Oh, Twitch Prime, you say. <laughs> Thanks, Kowise, for reminding us all to use our Twitch Prime for a free subscription to a channel of our choice, perhaps the one you're watching right now. Fish Strats donated $20, had to donate during this immensely impressive run. Keep up the great work, GDQ. Thank you, and we will. Anonymous also donated $500. I always enjoy watching these events. Thanks to the crew and everyone behind the scenes that keep things running smoothly all week. Y'all are awesome. We received a $100 donation from Drill the Heavens, who said, Dark Souls is one of my favorite games. The way Regal just bodied Ornstein and Smo is amazing. Praise the sun and beat the cancer. A donation here from Ali and Ryan. This donation goes out to my dad, who already beat cancer once, but is fighting for his life once again. I am so moved by this event. So much positive energy from everyone, all going toward a great cause. Let's kick cancer's butt together. Ali and Ryan gave us $500. Thank you so much. We're still setting up for this next run control, any percent by Brian Otto. I know that a lot of my friends out there are really looking forward to this run. Control, a very popular game, and uh, the looking forward to uh, seeing how it'll be broken here. In the meantime, I'll keep reading some of your donations. 
Here's $100 from Gasparilla, who said, praise the run. Wraith donated $50. Happy 10th, GDQ. Always donate during Souls board games. Praise the sun and may the good blood guide you. Here's to 10 more years of games and hopefully seeing the end of cancer. <laughs> Solaire of Astora donated $700. <laughs> Praise the run. $50 here from Toby, who said, congrats on GDQ to 10 years of real gamer moments and genuine human goodness. But honestly, this is my favorite week of the year. Much love to production slash staff, to Regal and all the other runners for contributing their unbelievable talents, and to my friend Casey, who got me both into speedrunning and into Dark Souls. Praise the sun! Quick reminder that in tomorrow's run of Katana Zero, there is a cat and you can pet it. Therefore, you should donate to have us pet that cat in Katana Zero. <laughs> and of course, uh, some other upcoming incentives that uh, we have open right now when you donate at the website. Uh, you can put your dollars toward one of these, uh, one of these bonus runs or bids. Uh, we have Untitled Goose Game, a bonus any percent run of that tomorrow. A lot of people interested in that. And of course, the bonus run of Link's Awakening. That's the new version. That's going to be a good one. Peter V donated $50 and said, I've watched every GDQ since the original, so I want to wish everyone a happy 10-year anniversary. Awesome, Peter. Glad to have you along all this time. We received a $100 donation from Killer B. Thanks for being so awesome. Thanks, Killer B. 